Hey y'all, this is really important. Before you uh, make a hole to run new transducer, new power cable through, make sure your hole is big enough. I mean, it, it's gotta be big enough to run everything through without pinching them up, so. We're gonna get on it right now. Here we go. Eating fiberglass. <laughs> hey y'all, um, so I shot some video this morning run a transducer in my old bass boat. I'm fixing to run the cables and uh, get the uh, depth finder mounted. And I'll mount the transducer. I may get it all done yet today. Um, wanted to share this with y'all. Again, appreciate everybody's been watching these bass boat videos. It's amazing to me that very many folks watch them. It's a, a come from perspective of a, of a poor guy or a guy that ain't got enough money that I want to go waste on a brand new boat. I'm not going to spend eight or $100,000. It ain't, ain't going to happen. I can't afford it. I'm not that ignorant when I make this old boat work good enough. Okay, so I hope y'all are getting something out of this. Again, we're going to mount this depth finder and uh, hopefully get the windshield back on. Maybe get the transducer mounted and everything running tied up today. I got a few hours left. It's a gorgeous day. Stay tuned. I'm doing this old school. I'm Dale Verse. We'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, so I didn't make that hole quite that big. What I did was make the hole, I didn't have a hole saw the right size. I just opened up a little bit with the big drill bit. I made a little bit oblong so I could fit them both through at the same time. And I gave myself maybe an eighth inch extra. Good and floppy and loose, give them slack. Now I'll, I'll mount my gimbal bracket, make sure it's centered where I want it. And I'm still making a mess. This is all simple stuff. Everybody here watches this probably better at this than I am. Slow steps, easy. Can get a depth finder mounted on this old bass boat. Okay, before I get this thing screwed down, I'll drill four holes through the top layer of the glass. Um, this does have a wood bottom underneath it, so I'm just gonna go partially through so the screws get a good bite and don't break the glass any more than they have to. I've left myself enough slack. Of course, I can always feed more through, but I've left myself enough slack, my transducer and power, I can loop them back around without putting them in a bind. That's the key for me. I'm going to kind of get this thing centered, mark it where I like it centered, which will be somewhere right over there, and we'll make this work. It's not hard from here on out. It's just simple, practical stuff, but maybe somebody's never done this before. Maybe they'll get something out of this. Okay, this is going to seem pretty simple to talk about this, but just make sure when we're drilling holes in these old boats that we're clear. Most of these consoles are pretty clear for places like that, but I look underneath and you have to go in pretty far to hit anything, but just make sure before you screw anything down, drill holes, cut, whatever, you're not cutting something important, because we're trying to save money at this endeavor, not cost us more money, right? So this uh, backing plate that the depth finder actually clips into is kind of a new deal to me. I've never seen that. Uh, makes sense. It makes sure it aligns with the power right off the bat. you got a plug. A protector that comes across the top of the plug, you just get out of the way. Then if you want to take that point out of the boat, you just make sure and cover that back up because water's bad on that kind of stuff. But that kind of makes sense. So that's in place, good and sturdy. I think we're good to go on that. So there's what it looks like, y'all. Like I said, I give it a little bit of extra slack in the cables. Don't want anything pinched up too tight. Gonna look good from behind the console here. Um, I wasn't worried about, actually it's pretty centered, it don't really matter, uh, pretty close. I didn't measure it. Some of you more type A personalities would probably want to measure and everything, but that's good enough. Yeah, it would have been hard to put a, a much bigger graph on there with the existing windshield. And I'm not going to put the windshield on and button that up until I'm done wiring this thing, get it all set up, and can scrub everything down. A lot of dirt back in there, might as well get it cleaned out. That windshield may never been off this boat for all I know it. Gets, they get cruddy, nasty, but that's what it looks like. So we're going to get power to it, get transducer hooked up. Still working on the old bass boat, y'all. Still got some things to do. Got a graph installed on the console. It works. Well, haven't had it on the water yet, but it still works. 
back in just a minute. I gotta talk about a few more things on the old boat where we're at next. Try and do this the best way I can, the cheapest way I can, which means old school. I'll be right back. Again, I want to thank everybody who's been watching these videos. It's kind of amazing to me that just talking about this old boat apparently strikes a chord with some people. I'm not a rich person. Got this old bass boat. Bought it reasonable, making upgrades, making things better, fixing things, and uh, it's kind of a never-ending process. But even with a new boat, maintenance is part of it. This boat's been taken pretty good care of, but we've made some changes uh, in the last week. Uh, one thing I did, which is very important, I wouldn't have a boat without it. This one I actually had for over a month before I did it. Hard to see, but that's the keel protector. It's a rubber, heavy uh, piece of material that helps protect the very bottom of the boat. Um, this one had a lot of damage already, but that'll keep any further damage from happening. A kill protector is huge. Again, it's a 1998 20-foot tide craft. I sold it brand new in 1999 when I sold boats. Had a chance to get it back. Been took pretty good care of. It's got its dings. It's got its bruises. Fence is starting to fade on it. It got rained on pretty good yesterday, so I don't have the cover on. I'm going to cover it up here in just a little bit. Hopefully it dried out some. So... What we did this last time around was install that graph and a transducer. I didn't cover that. I finished that up yesterday. I'm telling you what, y'all. That was hot, gripey, nasty. The transducer, the biggest thing about the whole deal is following instructions. They're, they're pretty simple. I've done a lot of them. I still look at the instructions, check things out, use their little template to mark my uh, spot on the transom for the transducer, and that thing will not be perfect. It'll have to be adjusted and changed and moved. They always do. All I want that thing to do is work perfect when I'm idling around looking at stuff. I want it to work up to 35 or 40 mile an hour strictly for depth and safety. After that, I don't care. If it don't reach a 70 mile an hour, that's fine because I don't run 70 mile. Well, I hardly ever go. I may go 70 mile an hour pulling a boat once. No, no. 70 mile an hour is not part of the plan. What I've got here is my old John Boat Bass boat that I built. The last couple years and fished a lot of them and had a lot of fun fishing out of this boat. Had it for sale. Nobody's really looked at it. It's overkill for most people around here for a John boat. That's fine. Whatever. I don't have to sell it. Not yet anyway. Um, I'm going to take the 7 inch Garmin Striker. Again, a cheaper unit. It's a $400 unit. And I'm going to take it all apart and I'm going to put it on that boat. I was really looking and hoping, my plan was to use an old-fashioned flasher style on the front, a modern, um, like a, a Vexlar, and I can't hardly find them. When you do, they're $400, and again, I'm trying to do this on a budget. I'm trying to, uh, not cheap, frugal. So this boat here, the last thing it probably needs, especially if I ever sell it, is this front depth finder. I can fish out of this boat in a place I like to fish and never have to have a depth finder. The only thing I really needed it for the last year or so was water temperature, and that's just pretty a limited deal, too. So I'm going to pull the gimbal bracket off, pull the wiring out, take the transducer off, and it's going on that boat. And it's going to be hot, but I'm going to go ahead and start on that for now and see if I can get that done. So in keeping with my theme of talking about what I'm doing as I go here, I've got my power and my transducer all unhooked from underneath here. I started to pull my transducer back through and the plug is hanging up in my mount that I made. I don't know if I ran that ahead of time or it just went through easier. I don't remember. Instead of pulling on this stuff hard, take the, the harder road is the best road. I'm going to pull this mount up a little bit and wiggle that thing out because you start yanking, you're going to break stuff. It's always expensive stuff. So... I'm unbolting the troll motor just a little bit. Give me some room to lift this mount up. And hope I can get that out pretty easy. Because it's a... Uh, I put enough silicone in there. Anyway, it's stuck. So that's good enough. I obviously put this thing together so it wouldn't come back apart. That was a 30 minutes of not being able to get a hold of screws. Getting that bracket off. My mount, my troll motor, my base. But I got my transducer cable loose now. So we're good to go. That's probably the hardest, hopefully that's the hardest thing I'll have to do this afternoon. 
So it's a few days since I last uh, worked on this project. We've had the Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it's actually Sunday evening, so I had work to do, real work instead of play work. So we're gonna work on this boat again a couple hours this evening, maybe get this front graph put on, which would be pretty cool. I'm not sure where I'm gonna get to use this boat next. Uh, we're taking a, some time off from our job because I have a lot of work to do up at my job. So hopefully next few days, a couple weeks, I get to use this boat some. Nothing really major planned right now. Oh, one thing I want to make a note of. I saw these strip ties bag sitting here. When I got done with that back depth finder, made sure it powered on. I got underneath the console and took those strip ties, those zip ties, and I tied the cables the transducer and power cables together loosely, made loop, tied them together. I tied them up out of the way to the hydraulic steering hoses that doesn't move solid out of the way. Couple strip ties, and hopefully that keeps that. I'm a huge believer in stuff not moving, not vibrating, not shaking. It's no race car thing. If something moves, it'll break. So that's my plan with that. What I've already done is uh, I put the transducer on already on the troll motor, got it on first. And to do that, I pulled the prop off. That way I didn't have to open up the hose clamp all the way. Kind of a little slicker trick. A bigger diameter motor than the other one. So I took the troll motor prop off, loosened this up, put it on, got it good and snug, got it good and centered. Put the prop on, so simple, I hope. There's a hole already here where the last graph was. I'll put the mount over it, make it simpler wiring. It'll be maybe Got to reach in here and get the wire, and so I'll pull this panel off. Be nice to have new panels. These things are getting shot. Uh, six screws or so, seven screws. I'll pull this panel off. I'll get my wiring run through, and then try to figure out where I'm gonna go to for power. I have an accessory switch here, but even that being said, I had an open circuit on the board in the back, just an accessory. But there's, it, everything's so tight. Everything's, it, it's a, it's a pre-bought harness all these companies buy. There's no room for wiggle. And if I start trying to pull wires off and make room, I'm gonna break stuff. So I end up going to the ignition switch. Like I said, I had some worm to work with there. This may be the same way. I may end up just clipping in with those Scotch block clips, which is why I use in the back, to uh, just a good hot and a good ground. Uh, I, I won't know until I get into it, but probably just, if I can go, on the power side of that switch, that switch has to be turned on for the to work, that's fine. If I have to just go to the back side where the power is constant, that's fine too. You just gotta remember to turn the graph off. Actually, it's, it's really not that hard except reaching in that little bitty hole because my big arms, you know, we'll see how this goes. So, I got this panel out and as everything, it's tight, everything's wound up in there. But off this accessory switch, this orange wire, I have a common black ground. And they're tied together here. I don't know how they're tied together there. That seems a little weird. Um, I believe, it, and it terminates in this. So I'm pretty sure that was where the last graph was. Now that didn't work on the console very well. I'm gonna check them for power. But I think what I'll do is, I'm gonna take that tape off and see if that's how that is. If that's not a good butt connector, I'll fix it there. I think these are just taped together to be safe. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That will take me to this accessory switch for it, so the graph will have its own power supply and isolate it. And I think that's what I'm gonna try. So we'll see if that works. Is this boring everybody yet? It's just the way it goes. Um, I think too, another good reason to do these things for yourself is troubleshooting. If you have a problem on the water and you're the guy that did it originally, if you screwed it up, but whatever, it's sometimes, well, it sure beats the heck out of chasing other people's weird things. Uh, time on the water is precious. Getting broke down and, and or not being able to have something to utilize that you want is a problem. So by knowing at least mostly where things are and how it works yourself can save you some issues on the water. That's always been my way of thinking. I had another thought a minute ago. The very first job I ever had rigging boats, 1987, the very first job they turned me loose on by myself 
was putting depth finders on a Fisher aluminum boat and hooking, drilling holes in a brand new boat, that's scary, mounting the, the depth finders and getting power to them, getting transducers. That's the first thing I ever did. I remember how cool it was when it all worked right the first time. So hopefully it'll work right the 101st time or whatever. So you remember our wire we used to fish the transducer through. I'm gonna do that on a little bit smaller scale here. I have some 14 gauge annealed wire again with a hook in it because an eight year old girl couldn't reach her arm in there hardly far enough to get this wire through this hole and back here for power. So I'm gonna, and this is, this is tough, it's tight. I'm gonna try to put some bends in this besides that one to reach in I put a little tape on these two here, my power and my ground, and the fuse. Push them through that hole, put a little tape on them, try to reach in, try to hook them and gently pull them up. See if we can make that work. I gotta be very gentle, again, that's very fine wire. Does that makes sense? That's what we're gonna try to do. I don't know what I'm doing as I'm filming this, if I'm just holding my mouth right or whatever. But I caught that the very first time. I mean, come through just slick. So, again, be very, very, very gentle. I know I'm not filming this good. Feed that, feed that through. And I have my power to get hooked up. That, that just, sometimes things work out. Now the same thing has to happen to get my transducer cable, except we gotta go the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna feed that transducer cable in. I've already got my hook run through from the other way and I can already see it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. All I have to do is put my transducer cable in it and carefully pull it the other way. And again, fairly easily, I've got my transducer cable run through too. I still have to find a way to route it through the panel. I'll probably just, I don't know. I may have to cut me a hole, we'll see. But that's how that worked. Okay, we got power. Now, what I did, I just tied my wires together real quick just to make sure, being safe, being careful. Turned the accessory switch on, no power. Went back, turned the main switch on at the dash, got power. That's fine, I have to have both. The main power switch on, the accessory switch on for the depth finder, that's fine with me. Okay, that's, that's very cool. So I'll now butt connect these together, tape everything up, Take all this extra cable and wire and strip tight in nice loops and tuck it away where it hopefully doesn't bounce around a lot and we have a depth finder. So that's how simple that is. Get all that tucked away, nice, figure out how I'm gonna run my transducer cable. Uh, make it look decent, it's gonna be tricky because there's no hole for it. I can't see where they had it before. Um, then we mount the transducer cable to the trone motor with usually strip ties and electrical tape. I'll decide how I'm gonna do that. We'll go through that and I'll be done. That's all there is to it. We have power. Okay, I'm gonna show all this again just because I can, it's my video. And the reason for doing this, I now have these buck connected together, but that's all I've done. Got my power on back there, turn the power on here, make sure I have power again. Okay, good. Because too many times over the years, I made everything thought was good, ready to go, <laughs> and wasn't good. Now, I'm going to carefully tape all this together with electrical tape and make it a tight bundle so it doesn't move, okay? And then I'll okay, we're mounted up, transducer run, got power still, everything's good and cool. I'll set it up when I go fishing. If I get to go fishing. Power off there, power off back here at the console. No big deal. Good plan to turn your power off anyway. Um, won't run down batteries easy that way. So there we go. Now, I know it's probably a lot of boring stuff. Again, I appreciate y'all watching. It's just, I have maybe three and a half hours in those two depth finders. I don't think I have four, except the piddling around and looking for stuff. But, about three and a half hours, so at a shop that'd be what, 60 to 100 and something dollars an hour? You know, you do the math. 
what's left I got my circuit breaker installed my new bilge pump with automatic switches installed my keel protectors on rod buckles I'll try to get that done this week that's going to require cutting some holes in the gunnels not a big deal there's already holes there from the old rod saver just got to open them up the right size and uh Oh, I'm going to get new struts. I've got one strut on a boat that works. The hydraulic struts hold lids open. It's kind of a silly thing, but that gum, it's sometimes a pain in the butt to hold them lids open. Struts aren't going to last. None of them last very long. I think they're all the exact same size on this boat, so i got to have one, two, three, four. I'll probably get five, six. I'll get six of them. Won't be too expensive. That way, at least for a while, they'll all be brand new. Other things that's going to happen, some lighting stuff, uh, some interior exterior lighting because i like to do some night fishing this year and there's only one interior light in the boat that's not very much oh as far as depth fire is concerned uh, next time i go fishing of course i'll make sure everything works that transducer there may need some fine-tuned adjustment they usually i usually get them pretty close the first time um but that's not going to be a big deal i won't know that i get on the water and just for fun i found some wheels these wheels are great, they're fine, they're just old. I found some really neat wheels um, off a Bass Cat trailer. I think the guys will sell them to me reasonable, and those will probably bring something. They're trailer wheels, but they're directional, nice looking wheels. They're just not pretty. I think it'd be kind of cool to have modern wheels on it. I'm not much in the look. I don't care about that pomp and circumstance. I like things that work, but um, he got all five of those wheels. If he, he shoots me a deal on them, it's reasonable enough. I may buy them. They're high dollar brand new. Oh, I still need to mess with the front hitch just a little bit. I need a smaller roller on it. I think. I got to think about that, son. It's, it's okay. It's just, it's not perfect. I kind of like that to be perfect. I'm not a type A guy, but when it comes to hooking a boat up and getting on the trailer the same way every time, it's kind of important. So That's it. I have some fine tuning to finish up the wire, the, the transducer cable, mostly. That's it. Thanks for watching, y'all. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something else in this old boat you want to see. Uh, it's going to be an ongoing project, but the basic stuff is getting done. Thank y'all. We'll talk at you later.